<laughs> okay, enough of this levity. <laughs> so, let's get started. Um, so the title of tonight is The Statecraft of the Kingdom, which for those, apparently I didn't know that this word wasn't used much, but statecraft is a lot like Warcraft, where the generals uh, study out Warcraft, the tactics, the, mar the marching orders, all of these things. Statecraft is much the same for government officials, where you study out the skillful way of using your resources and the things to run a state or a kingdom or a domain. So it's, it's the art of war for politics, for lack of better words. Um, so first thing, as usual, disclaimers. This time it should make you nervous because I don't have any. Um, no disclaimers tonight. But I do have one request, is that for me to teach this right, I'm going to have to give some context of my personal journey. Um, so if it wears you out, put it on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> um, ju just so that you kind of see the progression as we go. So if that's okay with everyone, we'll get started. Okay. So for the context, my personal journey started right about the time Spirit of Life started. We, we raised in church all my life, but whenever we started Spirit of Life, I really started pushing into what the Bible actually said and really learning it for myself. And that's when I really started building that relationship with God. And through that relationship, we started out and I, I found the mystic movement. And during all that, God was leading me and Holy Spirit was leading me and teaching me all of these different mysteries, different secrets, all of these other things that we'll get into in other classes. But for tonight, it's important to know that um, one of the things I was led through is basically spirit votech, where I was learning the structures of the universe, learning the structures of creation, and how to activate, use them, understand them at a glance. So symbology, numerology, all of these things, Holy Spirit led, of course, don't go out searching it for yourself unless you know what you're doing. But that was kind of my first step in finding a place in the kingdom because now I was the structure guy. Whenever we were working on something, we were seeing something in the spirit, I could piece it together and kind of understand what was really being said, what we really needed to do. If we needed to pray something out or do a prophetic act, I had the understanding through Holy Spirit and the training we went through to have that vocation and to work in it. So we st I started there, really. And then we kept moving forward in the relationship, kept moving forward in learning and, and walking and learning the ways of the kingdom, learning the ways of love. What does it mean to be like God? What does it mean to be loved? What's the real breakdown of these things? And through the studies of the structure, I understood that a little bit better. But after I got the job, then I got the position, so I started getting these positions in the heavenlies of being a prophet, being this position, that position. And I really had responsibility in the spirit and in the physical in which I had to use these skills. And then as we walked through that, I, I walked in it actively every day, building the relationship working in the prophetic, working in the structures, working in what I was meant to do. And after a while, I think it was a year and a half or so of doing all that, um, one night I came home, I went to my room, and in my room, Holy Spirit stood in front of me and said, okay, I want to take you further than this, but I need you to put it down first. So I'm like, okay. I gave him all of all the mantles I'd acquired, all of the titles, all of everything, everything that made my position in the spiritual, I gave it back to him and just said, I'm nothing. Let's start over. So with the knowledge I had and nothing more, we started it fresh. So no longer a prophet, no longer the structures guy, no longer any of that. And we started working back up to it, working back into what we were going into. And that's where we kind of are now. At this point, I've, I've come back into the structures. I've come back into the mystic. 
but I'm working now and now I'm currently in this position of an emissary. So whenever I say, and those online have heard me say it, there's more in heaven and earth than angels and demons. There's more in the underworld than just hell. It's because those are the places that I go. Where other people go to the heavens, I go to the earth. I go to creation. I go to these other realms, other beings, other kingdoms, other... There's more than just the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. There's... I'm not going to get into that here. That's, again, you want to know? Come find me. Find my courses. <laughs> we'll go into that later. But there are a lot of kingdoms. There's a lot of kingdoms in the earth. There's beings that were placed here during creation to help us in, cur in curating creation. So those are, the, those are the beings that I tend to work with. Again, my mom works with the host, works with the angels. Several others work with the angels. I work with everyone that's not classified as an angel most of the time, along with the angels. <laughs> so whenever I'm saying I'm an emissary, it's like, Whenever we're working in the spirit, there's the army of the host, and then there's the emissary that takes a message before the army gets there. There's the one that does business on behalf of the Lord. That's my position right now, currently. I'm still, there's more positions than that, but that's where I'm going. So that, that's the context, is you start out being yourself, learning who you are learning what you were created to do. Then you find a job that fits that, and you get training. Then you go into an actual position. And then as your, as your relationship with God progresses, then he starts giving you authority in that realm, in those positions, in those ways of working. So that's the context. Now, statecraft. Let's actually get into the actual notes. <laughs> Statecraft, for this, for this particular teaching, I've broken it down into four sections that we're really going to look at. The first is a governmental positioning. The second is the resources of the kingdom. So government in the kingdom, within the kingdom realm. Resources of the kingdom, how we're supposed to work with it and what kinds of things we're working with. And this is all going to be very broad. If you want to know more, we'll go into it later. Um, the military, because heaven has a military. Some of, some of us are a part of it. Some of us are to take charge of it. So there, that's a position. And then foreign relations. Like I said, there's more than two kingdoms in the realms. So we need to know what our positions are in relation with everyone else. Everyone good so far? Okay. So, our goal is to enforce the government of the kingdom of heaven on earth. So, the Lord's Prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's kind of our, our goal. Our goal is to become like Christ and have that kingship in the earth realm and bring the government of heaven into the earth realm and make earth like it's supposed to be. Um, as far as learning the laws of the kingdom, learning all of the ways that we're supposed to do that, I'll leave it to you guys to figure that out. <laughs> you got to have some homework for yourself. <laughs> so, first thing is resources. What are the resources of the kingdom? Well, Obviously, everything at your hand is a resource. From the camera that's recording this right now to the chair you're sitting on to all of these things are assets. And then there are the currencies. Um, in heaven, we have things like faith. You have um, love. You have hope that you can trade with to gain or to achieve an objective. On the earth, we have cash. We have gold, we have mineral resources, we have things at our disposal that we can use to gain or to achieve. Does that make sense? So, the important things to know about working within the kingdom 
for resources is, um, actually, I'm jumping ahead of myself. The, the first thing we really need to know is personnel is also a resource. So there's four kinds of personnel that I've really seen while I'm working in all these things. You're going to see four a lot because, again, structure guy. But there are the commonwealth, which is the laymen, the, the common people of the kingdom, which is not a slight against anyone. It's simply you are everyone that's not a government official or a military official. You are not technically official. You're a craftsman. You're an artisan. You're a baker. You're a this. You're a that. You're a poet. You're the ones that make the kingdom a kingdom because it's the dumb and the king. <laughs> kingdom. That's a bad way of saying it. <laughs> You're not dumb. <laughs> but it's, it's the realm that the king stands over. If there's no realm for him to rule, there's no reason to have a king. Simple. Uh, so these are everyone that's not an official. And then there's warriors. Warriors are your generals, and they're the action people. They're the ones that enforce the laws. They're the police. They're the army. They're the these people and that people, the spies, everyone. Yes, there are spies in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> Ask the prophets. They kind of know what the devil's doing. <laughs> um, so that's um, the main fighting force of the kingdom is the warriors. And I'm, I'm just looking at mankind or the sons of God in these positions. Yes, angels hold up a lot of these. Other beings hold up a lot of these. We're talking about us in this. Um, then there's the princes, which is pretty, and this is my definition. The actual definition is different. But those who hold authority delegated to them by a king to do business on the king's behalf. So, like, my position as an emissary, I'm a son of the king, but I'm also delegated that task on behalf of the king. So I would be a prince in that situation. Um, these are people like the prophets who speak on behalf of God. These are people like the kings that God sets up on the earth um, when they're working directly under his rulership. Because there's also the next section is getting ahead of myself again. These are also ambassadors and others officials. So um, like some of us here have been given titles in the spirit of financial advisors or financial this or that or lead intercessor or like Miss Ann would be in the warrior classification of generals where she's placed in a position of leadership, but she's in the warrior classification. Does that make sense? Um, and then the, the last one is the kings, which is those who have reached the level of relationship with God that God now trusts them to rule on their own. So he, he's it's like a prince where he's official, they get, but they get their own realm of authority, and God gives them, uh, I just had the word, it went away, sovereignty, where they can work with God or apart from God, and God upholds their choices. So like Proverbs says, the words, of the, the words of the king are law because God upholds his word. So it, it's, it's an example would be Jesus Christ, where every word that Jesus spoke was a decree, a law, a actual kingship thing. But he worked with God because he could do his own thing. He was sovereign, but he yielded. So those, those are the personnel that we work with, which would be if you, if you gain the rank of king, you now have these people under you. You, have, you become a head of another body under you. Have I lost anyone yet? I feel like I'm going fast, but I know from recording that I'm going slow. <laughs> so as a commonwealth, this should be your mindset that you should work to generate as much happiness and prosperity for the good of the kingdom and to live your life to the best standard you know. So you're responsible for what you do with your own life. 
as a commonwealth. So if you're an artisan, generate income for the kingdom. If you're a poet, generate joy within the kingdom so that everyone wants to live there. It, it's a morality boost. It's a morale situation at that point. But there's also a way that you can generate income because without income or without economy, the kingdom falters. So we have to have every piece because if you don't want to live there, you're not going to live there. If you don't have a way to live there, you're not going to live there. So you have to have the craftsmen that build the houses, but you have the poet to make life worth living in that house. <laughs> so we have to all work together. And we're going to get into where everyone sits in that a little bit later. Um, so that's the mindset of the common man, of the commonwealth. Um, as a warrior, your mindset should be to hone your skills and prepare to carry out any assignment given to you by those in authority over you. This can be a prince. This could be a king. This could be other generals if you are a warrior and not a general. There, there's a hierarchy in the spirit, and you have to know where you sit in that hierarchy. If you meet a military man, ask him where he sat in the hierarchy, and you can tell you rank and file. <laughs> But you, you have to know, otherwise you can't follow the orders correctly. So, um, if you're a general, and this is specific for you, you have to learn to strategize efficiently and effectively. Because you're going to have resources, you're going to have personnel, and you're going to have armaments that need to be where they need to be at, at the time they need to be at, and doing the thing they need to be doing at that specific time. Just like D-Day, everyone had to sync their watches up, otherwise the whole thing would fall apart. So if you're a general, and you'll know this because you've been appointed to that, but you're going to have to know how to strategize efficiently and effectively. Um, as a prince, your mindset should be to know your position, your rank, and your responsibility, and to work to carry out those tasks efficiently and effectively. So you're like a general because you're going to have personnel under you. But you're going to have to know how to work with the resources and the personnel you've given to accomplish the task given for the kingdom's sake. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and if you're a king, your mindset should be to rule justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before God and man. And that's just the laws of a good king, or the ways of a good king is to rule by love. If you rule by fear, you're in the wrong kingdom. Um, you're responsible for the king, for the conduct of the kingdom, your officials, your warriors, and your commonwealth, because you set the standard by which everyone else lives. So you're responsible for generating your economy. You're responsible for generating your armies. You're responsible for every little thing that goes on in your kingdom if you are a king. That's why I say often that not all are kings. All are chosen to be kings. All are granted the rights to become sons of God, according to the word. But not all choose to attain that level of responsibility. Because it is, I've often said, if your words carried the weight that Christ's words carried, would you speak the same things? And would you be, held, would you be willing to be held responsible for every word you speak? Because that's what a king does. So, that's what the mindsets of these personnel should be. If you're a king, you're responsible for everything. You're granted sovereignty, but you're also responsible for what you do with that sovereignty. If you're a prince, you're responsible for the task you're given and to carry it out efficiently and effectively. If you're a general, same goes for you, but on the military side. Because there are campaigns going on in the spirit. We all know spiritual warfare is a very real thing. This is on a global scale at this point. So, and if you're a warrior, you got to know who your generals are. If you're in the army and you don't know, you know who your general is, then why would you take those orders? Why would you follow them? Why would you do any of what you're doing? But you also need to make sure that once you know who you're following, that you train and hone your skills so that you can follow them efficiently and effectively. You're going to hear those words a lot it's because that's how we need to do everything. Because efficiently and effectively 
is how the kingdom runs. It's simple. It's easy. It's not a difficult thing, although there are difficult processes within it. Um, and then if you're a commonwealth, live happy and be prosperous. <laughs> live long and prosper, as the Vulcans would say. But the, the, common, the commonwealth really should live by Ecclesiastes. If you're going to serve God, then serve God. If you're not, then eat, drink, and be happy, for tomorrow we die. So that, that's the mindset of a, of a commonwealth. Enjoy it. But if you wish to attain a higher level, seek the relationship with the king. So here's some examples of these positions. Uh, for kings, Adam, he was granted sovereignty over creation. Um, Abraham, he was granted sovereignty over his people, his, his household. And he dwelt as a prince among the, among the nations. Um, Moses, he was called a friend of God and given equal responsibility over the people of Israel. Because if you, if you really read the conversations he had with God, it's like, no, they're your people. No, they're your people. No, they're your people. <laughs> Neither of them want to take responsibility. But if you, do, if you live up to the expectations of God to the point that you're fighting over them, over whose people they are with God, over the people of God, I think you granted the right of king. <laughs> um, so does that, that make sense? Okay. So princes, Eliezer, which was Abraham's servant, he was given the run of Abraham's household. Also, Joseph, which I didn't put on the list, was given the run of uh, Potiphar's household. So that they didn't care what happened in the household. They had their true responsibilities, and that was it. And Joseph and Eliezer took care of everything else. Um, Samuel was a prince of Israel, a judge. He was given all of Israel to make sure that they ran it right according to the ways of God, through the instructions of God. Um, Ezekiel was a priest who was given the oracles of God to prophesy. Uh, and Paul, he was an ambassador of Christ and established the embassies of the kingdom on the earth. So for warriors and generals, all of David's mighty men, if you want to know more, go read, because <laughs> there's a whole list of them. Um, for the commonwealth, we're looking at Bezalel, who, made, who helped craft the tabernacle, um, the Shunammite woman, uh, who got to remember the story right. The Shunammite woman was the widow that baked the cake for Elisha. No, no. Built the room. Built the room for Elisha. I have it in my notes. I should just read it. The Shunammite woman showed hospitality to the man of God, which allowed Elisha to work in peace. And then Lydia, who, uh, who gave Paul and Silas a place to stay while they were in Philippi, which led to the creation of the church at Philippi, who, uh, who supported Paul in later journeys. So a commonwealth is not a small thing. If you do what God says in the time that God says it, or any instruction you're given by the authorities over you, then you have great impact. Because Lydia, what's said about her is that she was a seller of purple. That's all she's known for. So she was a dye maker or fabric maker. So she wasn't some high-to-do person, but she created a big chain effect that allowed Paul to save most of the known world at that time. So small things have big, big impact. Butterfly effect, you could say. Um, okay, so how do we know which group we're in? If you're a king, you probably know because God will have had this conversation with you. <laughs> you. You don't really get to that point without having a talk. Um, let's see. And you, you'll notice in the examples I gave that all of those kings had a very close relationship with God. So Adam, 
walked with God. Abraham met God in his tent door. Moses stood with God on Mount Sinai. All of these face to face. Moses would often be in the tent of meeting before the face of God. So if you're going to be a king, you're going to have to see God. That is possible according to scripture as well. Again, another sermon, no teaching. We'll go there later. <laughs> if you're a prince, you'll know because you're appointed to office by God or by a king. Again, once you're granted that sovereignty by God, you now appoint those under you. So, yes. So you will be appointed by God or by a king for a purpose and with the authority to authority to accomplish the purpose. You will be held accountable directly to the one who appointed you, and you will be held responsible for every decision and action you make, because ultimately you're a reflection of the one who appointed you. Um, if you're a warrior, you will know because of your mindset. I've met a lot of warriors going from church to church and from everyday life. And you know him as soon as you meet him. <laughs> My brother is the biggest teddy bear, but you rile him up and he will whoop you. <laughs> He's a warrior. Miss Ann, she's the sweetest person I know. You get her riled up, you back off real fast. And I'm about twice her size. <laughs> so you know the warriors just by meeting them. They're, they're not hard to find. Most of them carry a big stick whether they show it or not. Um, and if you're a general, again, you'll be pointed. You're very similar to a prince in this situation. And really, most leadership of ministries on the earth would be considered, let me rephrase, that God has appointed would be considered princes because they're all sons appointed for a task. But very few, I've, I've met very few kings in the earth, and most of them are in the cloud of witnesses. So there, that's one of those things that has not yet been revealed to its fullness. Um, but if you get there, let me know because I want to meet you. <laughs> that goes for those watching in the future too. Um, but if I meet you, I'm going to ask you what your realm is and how, who's under you and who appointed you because you got to know that you're a king for a reason. So... And I lost myself again. Where did I go? Warrior. Oh, if you're a leader of the warriors, which would be a general or a captain, or I'm throwing out words, but the idea is what sticks. If you're a leader of warriors, then you will be held responsible for the training, for equipping and deploying your troops. So if you're a lead intercessor, if you're a praise team leader there, there's more than just those but those are the ones we've come accustomed to um those who fight in the spirit i've met a lot of them as an emissary i go with a lot of these people to their assignment so that i can carry the word um of their of their orders so um if you're a leader you're responsible for equipping training and deploying your troops Make sure that you know the strategies of the king as well as those of your fellow generals. So, again, a general is not the only one in the army. There's several over several branches. If, you, if you're working with, as a counter, or not counter, a cooperation, then you need to know what their strategy is and what your strategy is so that you don't get each other's way. And also so that you can... Uh, accompany them and to bolster their units. Um, if you don't find yourself in any of the previous statements, you're probably Commonwealth, which is not a bad thing, again. Um, without the people, there is no kingdom. As a Commonwealth, you're responsible for upholding the standards of the kingdom as well as causing it to prosper. I like this quote that, I, of course, I made it, <laughs> so I have to like it. But <laughs> the measure of the king is in the happiness of the people. And likewise, the measure of the people is the standards set by the king. 
So it has to go both ways. Um, I, I watch a lot of TV shows about kingdoms and stuff, so it always strikes me. Whenever you see a bad king, the people are always in poverty, always sick, always bad situations. When you see a good king who's loved by the people, there's dancing in the streets, the markets are full, it's a great place to be. So the standards set by the king make it to the people. The people show the measure of the king. Uh, as for assets, back to the resource part. If you are a king, you will, re you will be responsible for acquiring and creating or creating assets. Let me reset. As, as a king, you are responsible for acquiring or creating assets and wealth for your kingdom. If you're not a king, you will be all allotted assets by the king you serve under according to your requirements. So if you're a prince and you need so much personnel for such and such a mission or such and such a task, then you will be allotted those people the assets to do it, and the financial stuff to accomplish it. Because if I send you on a task, I'm responsible for making sure that task is done. Uh, military. Generals and warriors cannot, cannot exist within a... I'm getting tongue-tied again. <laughs> We're switching. That was resources from personnel and assets now we're switching to the military task or a military tab <laughs> so generals and warriors cannot exist in isolation within the kingdom it, it just doesn't work <laughs> it's like having a king with no kingdom they, if you don't have someone to if you don't have someone to lead you or to follow you cannot be an organized rank of militia it doesn't work. You're a rebel group. You're a vigilante. Those can be useful, but then you become a mercenary versus a militia. Does that make sense? So I was thinking of an example the other day of, um, and now it's gone. We'll, we'll get that later. <laughs> Sorry, my mind is different places. Um, so generals must know the allotments of the troops, so how many are under you, and, and warriors must know who they're fighting beside. So if you're a warrior, who's the man next to you? If you've got a shield, who's locking arms with you? If you've got a spear, who's forming spear balls with you? You have to know who you're fighting with, who your brothers in arms are, otherwise you're not going to be able to work together. And again, then you become a rogue or you become a mercenary because then it's a one-off. So communication, training, and strategy are critical. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know why you're doing it and what the objective is. And you have to be able to communicate with those who are working with you. So like where we are, we do conferences. So we have, in this example, we have personnel coming in and out for each assignment. So as Anne is a general over our worship here, as one of her assignments, there's many, whenever they come in, then she's kind of responsible for positioning and for what weapons they're using, if it's flags, if it's this, that, and the other, and what's going on. So if there's a strategy that needs to be put in place, if Holy Spirit's saying something, if something's moving, we need to get in time. So she's hearing, she's communicating, we're moving. That's the, does that make sense? So I don't mean to pick on you. <laughs> it's the easiest one. <laughs> okay. So does that, does that make sense? So if you're in charge, you need to know who's under you. If you're under someone, you need to know who's over you. If you don't know either, find out. Because we're a kingdom. We're not just a ragtag band of bandits. Even bandits have a leader. <laughs> Let's figure this stuff out. Otherwise, the body is disjointed still. 
We need to come together. If we're going to do kingdom business, we have to build the kingdom first. If we're going to do kingdom business, there has to be business to be done. We need to know what we're doing. So that's why we're doing stuff. That's why we're teaching what we're teaching. That's why we're saying what we're saying. When we're learning what we're learning. So, for example, we have teachers. Teachers research and they teach so that they can equip those who need to go out. The, the scripture says that the fivefold were set in place to equip the saints for their service and ministry and to bring them into maturity to the stature of Christ, which is the head. So twofold, you have to equip them for their role in ministry. Ministry is a department of government that oversees a section of that, of your everyday life. Of, so like ministry of defense, ministry of education, ministry of, that's another word of department, another word for those things. So if you are a minister, you are administrating something. If you are a minister of prayer, you are administering prayer. That's why the priests were ministers of God to the people. So whenever we say that you are a kingdom of priests and kings, you are supposed to get to the kingship level, but you are a minister of God. No, no, let me rephrase. The scripture says you are a minister to God. So you are to administer creation to God. So that's why we are the kings. So in Revelations 20, I was just reading it. Towards the end of the book, I've quoted it before. It says that the kings of the earth will bring their glory into the new Jerusalem. And it also says that nothing will pass the gates except those whose names are in the, the book of life. Which means that those in the book of life are supposed to be the kings of the earth. So if you're wanting to just go to heaven, <laughs> congratulations. You you now have the new Jerusalem and that's it. I'm one that wants to live forever and rule the earth. <laughs> but that's me. So the, each person has their role. Each person has what they want to do, what they're designed to do. But we're to administrate what we're given. It, it's, a, it's a scriptural principle that you give to receive. And it always comes back more so that you have more to give in the next cycle. But that's why we administrate things. Uh, and then the last section, which is foreign relations. And again, there's many kingdoms, not just two. Those two being the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. There's also the kingdoms of creation. There are many of those. As since I've already shared a lot of my testimony, one of the places I was taken was to see the dragons because they had their own council. Not all of them fell. I've also been taken to see the elves because they're here. They're not just fairy tales, literally. So the if you're gonna go there, you're gonna have to go there. And I'll just drop the mic there because I know I've lost a few people at that point. But again, if you're going to go there, you're going to have to go there. God never said that this is the only planet he inhabited. God never said that we are the only sentient beings in creation. If angels exist and if demons exist, there has to be something else because not all of them fell. But there's also a lot of creatures in the earth that aren't just animals. So I'll get off my rabbit trail. <laughs> but if you're going to go there, be willing to go there. Because if you're going to rule, if you're going to govern, you have to know everyone that's coming through your gates, every being that you're going to be working with. If you're going to govern, you have to be willing to govern. Off the soapbox. <laughs> But for, huh? Oh. Sorry, AC kicked on. Better? Okay. Pause. <laughs> okay. So, foreign relations. Many kingdoms, seen and unseen. We must be aware of the alliances, the trade agreements, and the policies of those other kingdoms. 
so that we know who we're working with, who we're working against. If we're going to war, we, get, we need to know if we meet another in, enemy on the battlefield or if we meet an ally on the battlefield. We have to know who we're working with. Like I said, there are, there are dragons that fell, and there are dragons that didn't fall. And the reason that I know this is because whenever I went there, they said, I'm so glad, that to, I'm so glad I finally met a son, and one that's not stab happy. <laughs> not exactly in those words, but to that extent, because they, they welcomed me into the council because I didn't swing the sword first. But every story I've heard from Christians who've seen a dragon, they swung a sword first. And that, that's not how we need to do with our allies. That leaves a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths if you strike an ally. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the only thing I can say is if you're going to go there, you've got to be willing to go there. Because there's more in heaven and earth than angels and demons. Even the ones around the throne, the, the living beings, are not classified as angels. If you saw an ox that was larger than a regular ox with four wings and eyes everywhere, and you didn't read Revelation, you would say it was a demon or a monster. But that's what's in front of the throne of God. So there's more. And if we're going to do kingdom business, we have to do kingdom business. All of creation is groaning. That's not just the rat in the wall. That's not just the church mouse. That's not just the earth. All of creation. So if you're willing to govern a little, be willing to govern a lot. Otherwise, you're going to go as far as you're going to go and no further. So, that's all I have on my notes. <laughs> now that I've gotten my rabbit trails out, are there any questions <laughs> that are safe for recording? <laughs> I know this crew. <laughs> I'll record it, and if it's worth going, then we'll go. Yes. As a protege? Okay, so... Since the AC is on, the question was, uh, if I'm understanding right, with Paul being a general, which I classify him as a prince, but same idea. Um, with Paul being a prince or a general, with Timothy coming up under him, are you are you asking what position Timothy would be in? He would still be a commonwealth, because again, he's not appointed yet; he's not officially in position. But he is learning. So it'd be like me when I was talking about being in the Votech training. I was I was an apprentice, not a full fledged craftsman. Does that make sense? Yeah. You, so like I said, as you build relationship and as you achieve those levels of responsibility or maturity would be a better word. As you mature, so is I often see it as like when I was a child, I had clean my room, fold my clothes, and cook lunch if mom wasn't available. But as I grew into a teenager, now I could go drive a car. I could go here, there. I had a job at the church. I had all of these other things that I could do. But that was because I matured to the level that I was responsible to. So if you're going to be responsible, if you reach responsibly above what you're doing without doing those things. So, for a sake of example, if Timothy started working on Paul's behalf before he was ready, then he would have been lowered or demoted. But if he rose his, his level of responsibility he was willing to take and his maturity level that he could handle it, then Paul would have raised the ceiling for him. Does that make sense? So you reach out with your ability, but you don't do above what you're asked. Does that make sense? So th there's a level where you, where you take initiative, but you don't overstretch. You don't overreach. 
because overreaching gets you slapped. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Okay. So if you're, and again, once you get into an appointed position, you're responsible for those that are under you in that position. And if you're not told who's under you in that position, then you're responsible for the task that you're given, and that's it, and what you're allotted. It's like a government official. If you start doing someone in, something in other people's departments, you start getting rid up. But if you stay in your lane and you do the best that you can, you get promoted. It, it's, that's a lot of what the kingdom works like. So I, I'm assuming that it's okay. So any other questions? Comments? <laughs> or concerns? <laughs> As a friend of mine used to say, complaints to the management. <laughs> Okay, all good?